and uh, now we're going to talk about uh, uh, metadata sustainability. And uh, I'm uh, a coordinator of the new SCOS thesaurus system at SVT that is also used by Sound and Vision. <laughs> Actually, they have developed the system and we are happy to use it, so to speak. Uh, and this talk will concentrate on how we have worked on sustaining the metadata quality in our production domains during migration of metadata from the old to the new MAM in the last couple of years with the help of this new thesaurus. Uh, I will give you a short introduction and uh, Jonas will give you more information about the technical parts and uh, my colleague Katrina will give you uh, some, oh sorry, uh, uh, some practical information about the development. Uh, as you can see on this timeline, my department SVT Archive has been archiving uh, broadcast programs, television programs, since 1958, from the start, all person names, both contributors and creators, has never been a controlled vocabulary for persons and organizations at SVT until now. And uh, different kinds of tesori for keywords and places have been used almost all the time, but so I won't talk about them. Uh, a good guess about the number of unique person names in our MAM system is around one million. Uh, and as you can imagine, there is a lot of obstacles uh, to overcome before you can transform the persons with most references to approved agents in a controlled vocabulary. Uh, so, three and a half years ago, the present state was that our program archive was getting old <coughs> and a new man was in the making. Uh, therefore, we had a golden opportunity to clean up more than two decades of wild-grown metadata in the old digital MAM system in a so-called <coughs> metadata cleanup project. Uh, when we started this project, our first decision was to clean up our metadata pre prior to migration into a new archive library. And the solution was to store clean metadata in an intermediate system that Jonas and his colleagues provided and then implement a new separate thesaurus manager with a data set uh, for persons with approved person names. Uh, the organizations were of course easier to manage, so I, I won't talk about them. Uh, the approach was to convert vendor-specific legacy MAM metadata to a standardized format, in this case EBU core. And our purpose was to hand over cleaned up and standardized metadata to the new media archive team. Um, we also realized that it is equally important to implement cleanup rules as part of the conversion. And uh, the most important rules were to drop outdated and junk data, of course, and to merge duplicates, which was many, and to extract persons and link persons to the thesaurus where possible. Um, we also improved relations between entities in the EBU core style and uh, also used a repetitive process of trial runs, data examination and the definition of rules. And um, I will, <laughs> this is an example, um, uh, a screenshot from the migration process. Uh, this is a big role set that Jonas will tell you more about. Uh, uh, there have been many challenges in the metadata cleanup process, and I will give you some examples. Uh, first of all, the domin dominant data source provides person names in free form, unfiltered from the planning and production systems. Um, and we also had to make decisions about how to handle creators versus contributors uh, that originally were in two disjoint data sets, uh, but the same person was often appearing on both 
problems on both sides. Uh, the solution going forward was to link persons and regarding the role creator or contributor to the thesaurus. Uh, another obstacle was that we had a lot of writing variants and misspellings and a lot of wrong roles due to the data entry errors or production changes and of course uh, a problem with overwhelming amount of person records. So how did we manage to clean up or at least some of this? Uh, our approach was to extract all persons from metadata records and store them as separate entities. We decided that the person consists of a name, a role, description, plus a few extras. We decided to use roles to distinguish a person. We also decided that description and extras can be used to distinguish a person uh, in a more manual way. As you can see here, some people like Carl Bildt, our <coughs> former prime minister, uh, have different descriptions, sometimes with a party denomination. And of course, misspelling will cause the number of descriptions to increase. Um, the operations on person records that we have used are the following. Uh, to match, uh, a way to redirect variants to the best person records where the best is typically the one with the highest number of references. And uh, this is a mix of manual and automated rule-based matching, of course. Uh, we, we blocked uh, um, names that was not a valid person, often junk, and should not be exported. Um, we also split persons, which means that we had functions to split a person record into multiple new records. Uh, when it was a common name, and in the end, approve when <coughs> um, it's a proper approved person. Um, as I told you in the beginning, we have stored the clean metadata in an intermediate system, but since, uh, since June tw 2021, we also have a new separate thesaurus manager for persons, organizations, places, and subjects with an application user interface designed for archive editors. And during the last year, production tools at SVT can access data in the Thesaurus Manager via API, both in our new MAM, MAM system and in our new CMS. And this is the main interf user interface. Um, and in this example, you can have, you see the Another former prime minister, Magdalena Andersson. Um, but apparently there is also another politician with the same name but a different party denomination. Our prime minister is social democrat and the other one is conservative. Uh, thanks to the Sussur system, we are confident that these two will always be separated. And uh, now, uh, Katrina will show you more of this interface in a moment. And now, if you don't have any, que any questions, <laughs> it's time for Jonas to give you the technical side. Yeah. Hearing well? Yep. Okay. So, how did we do this from an implementation perspective? Quick repetition. We used two different systems. One of them is effectively a Metada intermediate metadata archive, but visually and UI-wise targeted towards rather content inspection rather than user library use. So although we store the entire archive, it's just a, a copy. Um, and the other is, like uh, Anna mentioned, the Thesaurus Manager. And uh, what Anna described was how the information is flowing from the, basically the raw filter data that they have cleaned up into the Thesaurus. There's a little bit on persons. <clears throat> okay, approach to migration. Yeah, I'm going to ask you afterwards to read everything. No, but on the serious side of things, and one little stream to the very left in that messy diagram is what the, what the source system had. And this, yeah, I don't know how many of you are parents when you think you, you 
kids are approaching the age of 18, can we like kick? kick? <laughs> we have the same kind of feeling about that old metadata. It's, it's turning 18, so kick, it's time. So what we did was, okay, let's give the, the team that, that is currently implementing the new system, uh, let's offload them with legacy metadata, strange things, and having to repair stuff. So that's why we took, took this approach. We cleaned this, all this so that when you're ready for it, you get clean, nice data. That's how it was built. Uh, we used the EBU core model. As the first part is called the class model, and the other is the metadata spec itself. Nowadays, this has um, nowadays this has evolved into EBU core plus. This happened after we did this project, but we're starting another migration in Brussels just about now. So I'm hope to come back and report was EBU core plus uh, better. But having that said, it was quite a positive experience following and trying to bend data into this standard. We got good help from EBU while doing it with sanity checking approaches and models, etc. So that was nice, um, and it's basically a flexible data model. On that, we used then a, well, the MIAM system, since I'm from MIAM, <laughs> to store the to data into the system. Um, we used a, we had the discipline of always documenting the spec as we went. As we discussed in this is iterative, meaning that you do something, you discover errors or results, or you find things you want to fix. But then, please have the discipline to always document it, otherwise you, you grow this joint pretty quickly. So we're here, everywhere we could, we try to follow the EBU course standard. Um, the other bit which we mentioned was also document all the rules. So what you're looking at here is a list that started with five things. Now the data in the old MAM is pretty okay. And then, after a year and a half of iterating, all those rules have a meaning that ended up being some sort of filter rule, copy rule, or whatever it was. So, uh, rinse and repeat. So once that was done, uh, we had what we call a production run, the first data dump of everything. In SVT's case, that's around 20 million records in total. And then we run an approach where we have a nightly catch-up. And since quite a while back, the new MAM system is receiving the daily updates so that for the, mem, the new mem that is under rollout, they receive a nightly refresh from everything that's been happening in the, in the production mem. <coughs> a little bit on the technical <coughs> side of things. Um, standalone system, um, my own core. And uh, then what we do is basically having one conversion adapter that reads uh, that reads the legacy data, one convert one out of the system, one conversion adapter that produces EBU core. Uh, we store it in a graph fashion using graph database and using that graph for the for all the relations you saw on the uh, on the diagrams, and then downstream it's pumped out to the receiving systems. Um, I don't think I'm going to do too much details now, but we will be available uh, outside afterwards. So if you want to have kind of a deeper question or even take a look at it, we have everything accessible outside. So that's the migration part. Second was Desaurus. Again, thanks to Sound and Vision, it gave us a challenge, build a good Desaurus manager or die. Um, and we survived. <laughs> so we, uh, we had the choices of SCOS or, uh, or ISO standard model. We picked SCOS mainly because that was the dominant direction that looked good. Um, we have used it for both flat lists, such as persons, or hierarchies with relations, such as sub keywords. Um, one key design point that was a hard memory, not only from SBT, but I've seen elsewhere, that is um, that you really want the, the source manager to be standalone. Otherwise, it typically gets bolted into a system and it becomes very hard to change it. And also, a thesaurus that is a side product of something, at least the cases I've seen, has been not so functional as you might wish. So therefore, for example, in the case of SVT, new keywords were rarely added because it was so cumbersome. So we tried to follow the SCOS standard using concepts that have all the things like labels, the, the, the different labels, the different description fields and all that. Catherine will show you more in-depth examples of uh, how it's been used. And of course, concepts have life cycles where you start as a candidate and then you're approved or rejected. Uh, so the, by far the biggest piece in terms of complexity was building the person to source, not building the source itself, but filling it with data in the most automated manner possible without having to type in or manually curate too much text. Um, a few key design decisions. 
the first one was, how, by the way, how many of you are old enough to remember P meta? Hands up. Or Smith? Yeah, good. <laughs> and you all know that we have first name, last name, salutation and all this. Uh, and it was all fine, very European. And then, well, the guy who's the key author for this is India. My name has seven things in it. You can't store it in the European standard. <laughs> so uh, basically, I'm just looking at it and looked at how many errors there were on data that was fed into such a model and looked at, no, it can't be done. So the, one of the biggest decisions was actually to go back to a single field for a name and rather use qualifiers and descriptors for other bits. We bent the SCOS standard a little bit by norm normally have a pref label that's forced to be unique, that's the whole deal. Um, we, instead of editing the pref label, we added what we designed, we called the base label, that's the name, for example, and then a qualifier that may, might be party affiliation, it might be the type of sports you're an athlete in, uh, it might be a whole combination of things, like within the European Parliament. Um, and then, of course, merge it into one. So, and then the other thing is that we try to reuse as much as possible of, since we had like a million references with dates, um, and some people occurring more often than others, uh, we try to keep all of that and build a nice little history of what a person has done. And all this is effectively sourced from broadcast graphics. Hidden labels. This one is um, my favorite when we try to convince people why production should use the source. These are all the variants of that famous anchor that aired. <laughs> Any misspellings, do you think? No. Ah, ah. <laughs> so, um, so this one we demo to many people that say, this is why you in your YouTube planning tool should look up the name, not enter it. Qualifiers, again, we use them for uh, to distinguish persons, either party or Form. So, current status, um, like we said, we're, the third source itself has been in production for a while, um, but, the, uh, but just literally as of this April, production use of the new archive entering data and production use of the new CMS have started. So that's nice, and we hope to kick that baby out so that, so that migration work can complete. However, until we have proper tools in place, for actually using the source data, we'll probably have to keep the person mangling piece of the system until production systems are improved. And once all of that is done, then the fun part begins. We realized, for example, that by saving all graphics, time codes, and names, and proxy video, we have close to two million uh, records where, which we can use to feed an AI, just so we get good, better quality courses. So that there's a lot of fun discussions. Catherine will tell a little bit more about the AI bit. But uh, hope, fun, hope to see fun things coming. Okay. And now it's my turn to talk a little about how Tia, as we call it, our thesaurus manager, works in practice. Uh, I'll show you some goals we have achieved and I'll show you some examples of how it works and then I'll finish with some thoughts on the future. So one of the goals we have achieved is, as Jonas mentioned, the correct spelling of names with up-to-date roles and scope notes across multiple platforms and systems. TIA has allowed us to take control um, over the correct spelling of names. And as you can see, some names can be spelled in a lot of different ways. Uh, with Tia, we can choose a preferred label, and then we hide all the misspelled versions um, of a name, but we, we are still keeping the misspelled versions of the name searchable in the MAM system. So if you write Zelensky in one of the 12 misspelled ways, you're still going to be suggested the preferred and correct label. Um, we have also achieved a much needed <coughs> update of our existing li list of subject words, as well as an easier way to edit subject words over time that, that change. For example, the LGBTQ or the that's a tweet. Um, our old list of subject words was outdated, and adding new words was difficult and time-consuming. But uh, Tia has completely changed that. Not only is it extremely easy to add a new word, it's very easy to place that word in the hierarchy. It just takes a few clicks and then you're done. Um, 
we have added a new concept scheme called genre subjects, which in time is meant to in part replace the image description and we hope that it will make the making it easier for reporters to complete the metadata registration in a faster and simpler way. We've had some difficulties over the years getting our local uh, news departments across the country to incorporate the metadata registration in their workflow, um, which has resulted in a lot of local news just floating around in our archive with none or very little metadata and no way of searching for it. So we hope that this concept scheme together with the updated subject words and names, will make it easier for them. Um, the words in this concept scheme is, is, uh, used for, are used for describing what you see in the clip, not what subject the clip is about. We have also achieved uh, an update of our, of our existing list of geographic subwords, subject words with the addition of new ones making it more specific and uh, that's especially regarding Swedish towns, areas, and nature sites. Again, with, as with the subject words, it's very easy to manage. Um, and we hope that the local editorial departments will add more words so it will grow in time. Um, so we can say that overall, TIA has provided us with a very easy way to control, edit, and update the accessible metadata and um, thereby sustaining a high quality of that metadata. And it has also provided us with a chance to be more participant in the design of the new MAM system, which we re also regard as an achieved goal. Um, we've been wanting to do that for a long time. So now I'm going to show you how it looks, how TIA looks when you're a cataloger working in the MAM system. Um, for the time being, there's only certain groups that use the new MAM system, but they are rolling it out more and more. So um, we haven't the work with TIA, TIA in production is quite new, as, as you mentioned, Jonas. It's about a month, so we are still improving it and updating it. So let's pretend that I am cataloging a new segment um, about a train accident, and I want to add subject words. So I will start writing Torg, which is Swedish for train. And then the candidates, uh, oh sorry, the suggestions from TIA appear in a drop down menu below. And if the word I'm searching for isn't there, I can add it as a candidate by clicking the, as you found out, the leg till, that's Swedish for add. Um, and this same logic also works for the other concept schemes. And then, if we move on to Tia, I can find all the candidates by sorting the different concept schemes by status. And then I get all the candidates in green. I can also sort by different, I can choose the concept scheme if I want to split it up in persons, organizations and that. And then I can start with approving, redirecting or rejected. Uh, redirecting is a way of if there's, for example, a subject word that's already in the in TIA, but like a, a synonym, then I can choose to redirect the candidate, and then it will automatically add it to as an alternative label. Um, TIA has also made it possible for us to, for us at the archive, to collaborate more with other departments at SBT. Uh, we are collaborating at the moment with Astrid, which is the CMS for svt.se. And they use some of the concept schemes in TIA to tag their content on the website. Um, they also, they have their own concept scheme that they call stories and it works kind of like a hashtag. Uh, and the sports department are the first one to use it. Um, they've just begun, so it's early stages, but it's, it's, it's looking good. And now on to the future, what we hope will happen with TIA. Um, we are planning on an integration with Wikidata and GeoNames, and we are hoping for an integration with the graphic systems so that all lower thirds are correct. Uh, 
We're also hoping for an integration with the news planning and program production system. And we expect uh, extended use of the thesaurus concepts in, uh, in CMS and, and in the MAM system as well. Um, we're also, uh, we've been, we're supporting the emerging AI initiatives uh, because thanks to Tia, our AI developers at SVT has started testing a couple of off-the-shelf tools. Uh, they've been testing uh, OCR scanning for extracting participants and creators. They have uh, started testing facial recognition and Anna and I were part of that. We took uh, pictures from of politicians from the government's website and we connected it, them with the unique name ID, ID that every name has in here. Um, and it kind of works, but it's still developing. Um, and some of the other projects as well with AI is visual search for genre images. Um, they're also testing that you can upload a picture your own picture and then search for similar ones in the man. They're testing speech to text tool and a named entity recognition that they're going to run on transcripts and subtitles. And the next step, I guess, is speech, <coughs> speech recognition. Um, so there's a lot going on at SVT right now regarding AI and we expect that TIA is going to be an integral part of that development. Oh, we're hoping so. Mm -hmm. Thank you.